Okay, continuing. Almost done, <laughs> ish. Uh, warlock, warlock, uh, dark possession. Now, I, I just want to say on a positive note, something I really like about this card: deal two damage to a friendly character. This is fucking cool. Um, you can put it on yourself. You can offload it on a minion. Um, you can use that to trigger death battles. You can use that to trigger self damage things, which Warlock's getting a bit of. So, like, this is a super flexible, um, super cool way to do this. I, I really hope we get more, more of these like damaging, self damaging Warlock cards. Have this where you can put it on a minion instead, because that's just really sweet. Uh, as far as the effect, Discover a Demon. I mean, I, I really like just the design of these cards. The one mana discover cards. This one, um, I don't know how good it is. So, in standard, there's going to be 17 demons after the rotation, including uh, the imp right next to it. So, like, the first thought's like, Q block. Are you going to put this in your Q block to hit more Doom Guards and Void Lords? Probably not, no. Because you're, you're. Enough of the time, you're not going to get offered those. Um. Like, class occurrence bonuses don't really matter. Oh, I didn't even count the neutral demons. So there's 17 class demons. Um, and how many neutral demons? Three? I think there'll be three after rotation. Sneaky Devil, there's a new one. Um, and Illidan? I might be forgetting somebody. I think So I think there's actually going to be 20, 20 demons. So the odds of hitting uh, exactly the one of the two guys you're trying to duplicate in that deck... Very, very low. So I don't, I don't think it works there. This is more like a general purpose kind of thing. Um, I think where it really works is like a kind of a Zooey egg deck that maybe also has some of the self-damage triggers. Like that initial instinct of you want to maximize your ability to, to make this the first effect as beneficial as the second effect, I think is the key to making this card really work. Um, that might be more viable in Wild. It's also notable, in Wild you can also get um, Malganus. So having extra Malganus is, is quite powerful. Um, but again, very low odds of hitting specific demons off of this. So, I don't know. I think it's a cool card. It's, it's one of the coolest designs in the set. Uh, very cool, very cool, but I don't, I don't know how good it is. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I might try to make this work in some sort of wild egg zoo thing. Because being able to pop your, um, your eggs with it while making more dudes, plus it's very cheap, um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a cool card. Witchwood Amp... This is a, this, speaking of zoo, this is a really cool zoo card. Uh, so basically, Worgen Infiltrator... Yeah, it's not a 2-1, but... The important thing with Infiltrator is that it's something they can't just remove. It's on the board that allows you to start making trades into stuff. Um, this one has a very, very cool effect. So you have it on the board, and then... They play a thing, and then you play your two drop and trade this like into their one drop, um, and then make your two drop into like. If you played like a three two, you have a three four now, and that's a really good start. That's like not quite old school overload shaman levels, but it's approaching it. Um, and zoo warlock is obviously already a very good class to. To be doing zoo stuff in, so this card uh, should find a home. It's very strong. I don't know. I don't know if it'll find a home in standard right now because it's, it's very hard um, to do that kind of thing. But like void lords and defiles are rough, man. But very powerful card. Uh, Curse of weakness. Interesting. Moving the attack debuffing into um, warlock here. Uh, it's pretty strong, honestly. I think the, the sweet spot for this card is casting it for four. 
Minus four attack renders most things incapable of dealing damage. Uh, and then you just trade their entire board and feel good. It's like, you probably don't put two of this in. I feel like I'm saying this a lot today, but as a one of, uh, this might find a home. I feel like there, like there's a lot of zoo tools, so zoo probably has better tools than this. But we've never we've never had this in Warlock to work with, so it's just um, a question of trying it out and seeing, you know, if there's anything that can happen there. Also, Void Ripper does work with this, so you can like echo down their entire board to zero, and then Void Ripper and clear everything. Like, minus six would kill everything. So that's like a nine mana combo. Nine mana, two card board wipe? That could be good. And then, even without the combo, it has some utility if you're playing like a zoo-ish deck. Um, sorry, my leg is extremely itchy today. Dusk Bat. <laughs> uh, this card's interesting. Three mana, two, four. Summon two, one, ones if you took damage. Uh, it's a beast. Lots of Warlock Beasts. It's kind of weird. Um, the closest comparison would be Imp King Boss, right? Imp King Boss summons a 1-1 one, one every time it gets damaged. It's also a 2-4. Um, this gets the 1-1s one, right away. You're guaranteed to. A lot of times Imp King would only get like 1. But usually it gets at least 2. Sometimes like, it gets more than that. Um, and then coming out later instead of immediately makes it generally better against AoE. If they AoE down your M King, you're still going to be left with a 1-1, one, one, whereas here you get nothing. Also, the conditional is really kind of rough on this. There's not that many deal damage to yourself triggers. And I guess that the idea, you have like uh, Flame Imp and Vulgar Humunculus as like the ideal minions to have curving into this. And I guess if you have those this is probably really good. Does that mean the existence of those cards make this good enough to put into a zoo deck? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Probably. I'm feeling it probably not, but maybe. It's very similar to M Gang Boss, and M Gang Boss is really, really good. So you have to at least look into this. It. This is kind of a thing where it's like the Spellstone. A lot of people... Um, thought the Spellstone just would not get upgraded very often because they couldn't see how many uh, self-harm effects were in Warlock just naturally. So this could be a similar thing, but, I mean, you don't really want to be running Hellfire in Zoo, which is a big part of that as well. So we'll see. I don't know. Uh, Rat Catcher, speaking of Egg Zoo in particular, this card's not that great in standard, I don't think, but, well, maybe, I don't know. But, like, wild when you have, uh, Ruby and Egg and stuff. So, three mana, two, two, rush, you destroy a dude, get his attack and health. Uh, we've had destroying dudes and gaining their attack and health before, but this one can attack immediately, which is a big difference. So, like, you play your Ruby and Egg, uh, turn one play this, not turn one, turn two, play this, make a 2-4, swings in while summoning a 4-4. Four, four. Just do stuff. That seems pretty good. In standard, you can still do it with the 3-drop the three drop egg, the Devil Sword egg. Uh, so this is a 2-5 swinging in, and you make a 5-5. Five, five. We also have the Dragon Egg we'll get to later, which is not very good, but... I don't know. Yeah, it's not very good. Don't, never mind. Uh, don't... We'll get to that one later, but don't don't do that with Rat Catcher. But the point is, um, zoo decks that kill off their own minions in order to actually snowball the board into an even better state have already worked. Like they're working right now. Um, this just feeds into that. It's a better tool than what they already have, I think. So it's a good card, and it'll probably see play. Uh, Blood Witch four mana three six, super solid stat line. At the start of your turn, do one damage to your hero. So this is actually an upside. Obviously, the idea is that you use this with your spell stones and I guess your dust bats and death web spiders and stuff to to power them up. The problem is we don't really have anything that needs to be powered up that much or anything that's a strong enough incentive to devote cards, like a card that only does that, right? This card exists only to hurt you 
it is a 3-6, so, like, this is the best way to do this kind of card. Um, where it's just, like, a super solid body with this super fringe effect. So at least you get the body. But it's super fringe. Like, I cannot stress that enough. Um, it's probably going to take them printing something that just scales infinitely with self-damage for this archetype to take off, I think. Because I just don't see this. I just don't see this happening. Like, you're... The main thing is the Spellstone. The Spellstone is already easy to upgrade. We don't need more cards to upgrade it. We, we're doing just fine. So, I don't know. Uh, Fiendish Circle, it's like Implosion, but you don't get the Plosion part. You just get the Imp. Four Imps for one. Four, four Imps for one. Four one ones for four. Um, solid. Implosion's a lot better. Because you get the removal, but I mean, you also roll two sometimes and feel really bad. I actually don't know if people are still playing Implosion. I'm actually not that well versed in the wild scene to know if that card still sees play. I haven't seen it myself though, so maybe Implosion is not even good enough to see play. And I think it's usually better than this. Um, I don't know. Zoo is pretty good at using small minions to do stuff. So there's a chance this will be good. But I think there's just one of those things where it's like there's better tools available. Um, it's like like calling the finishers wasn't even good in Shaman and they have Flame Tongue, which is better than anything Warlock has. So that should probably tell us that these aren't that great. But you never know. <clears throat> Uh, Deathweb Spider, 5 mana, 4, 6, uh, it might gain lifesteal, maybe. 5 mana, 4, 6 lifesteal is cool, but is not really impactful enough. Like, they could have just made this a lifesteal minion, and it would have been so-so. <laughs> it wouldn't even have been, like, crazy. It would have been, like, so-so. Like, yeah, alright. I can see that. Why not? Um... Yeah, no, I don't. I don't see this card being that good. It's just not enough. It's not powerful enough. Like it's hard-ish. It's not hard to trigger, but it's hard-ish to trigger. And what you're getting doesn't make sense. If you're so you're ta hurting yourself in order to be able to heal yourself. Like that doesn't even make. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> like why would I want to do that? You know, other things are like you're hurting yourself to play more minions. You're hurting yourself to kill bigger stuff while healing yourself. This is just like hurt yourself to maybe heal a bit later. I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. This card just doesn't make any sense to me. And it's not strong enough. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Get it out of here. Glinda Crowskin. Um, minions in your hand have X XO. Echo, six mana, three seven. Lots to talk about this one. With um, summoning portal is the main thing. So you make all your dudes cost a lot less, and then you echo out a bunch of copies of them. Um, that's kind of the dream scenario, and I'm looking forward to watching other people do that. Um, when I go watch their YouTube videos Thursday night, because I'm sure somebody will pull it off on release day, and it'll be cool. And then I'll see how good it is. It doesn't sound that great to me. I feel like Warlock can be doing better stuff. But, um, when the Q-Block package rotates out uh, in, I guess, a year or so, right? Um, we can maybe see this replace it as like their kind of in-game finisher thing. Where you just stick a portal and Glinda and make a bunch of something. But what? <laughs> uh, the other thing is just like giants. Just like sea giant or um, mountain giant. You know, you can do it in wild, I guess, where you at least have the Naga stuff. But like, you don't need more help there. I don't know. The card seems kind of clunky, but it's one of those clunky cool cards. Uh, I think there's definitely something good you can do with it. I'm not seeing the good. I'm not seeing it, but I believe that it's in there. I, I see it in her soul. 
Well, I'm not seeing it. I just said I'm not seeing it. But it's in there. I think I can change her. Uh, Alright, Lord Godfrey. It's a defile that leaves a 4-4. It's a super defile that leaves a 4-4. This card's great. We all know this card's great. Um, people... I've heard like people say, why wouldn't you just play Twisting Nether, which is guaranteed to clear for only one more mana. Uh, Super Defile is probably usually a clear. Um, and then you get the 4-4, and also you saved a mana. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That's like way better. Basically, if this clears the board, it's very meta-dependent. If this clears the board fully, <clears throat> then this is way better than Twisting Nether. If this doesn't, like if people are playing lots of giants or something, then sometimes Twisting Nether is going to be better. Sometimes you can run both, maybe, but that's kind of greedy. I think on average, this is probably the better card. Somebody's doing uh, dentistry out in the woods. Um, yeah, it's great. We don't have to say much about that. Um, yeah, so let me move on to Warrior and... Uh, Neutrals. <laughs> 